Hi guys, hi hi hi. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Hope you guys can hear me. Online students, I hope you can hear me. Welcome back, guys. Uh, guys, uh, uh, take out your tubes, guys. All of you, please take out your tubes. Uh, I think we have to start from uh, productivity and efficiency, guys. I believe we finished the last tube before that. I think so. I that's what uh, I feel. So just take your tilt uh, out gaze, yeah. Take this one out. Uh, open productivity and efficiency gaze, yeah. In productivity and efficiency gaze, we have to start off with this. Correct? No. Come, come, man. Come. Please take a seat. Many have decided to come for physical classes, I guess. No, many have decided to come for physical. Shall I pull this table a bit front? Should be more comfortable for you all, I guess. Okay, guys. Uh, guys, uh, so shall we start with this tute? Azad, any idea? Can you remember? No, you can't remember. If we, if we finish the previous tute? No. I, to what I remember, Lakshmi, do you remember if we finish the previous? We finished, right? Lovely. Clear. So, guys, uh, let's start off with productivity and efficiency. Guys, uh, my target is to finish the syllabus by end of this month. So that at least by February, March, April, and a little bit of May, we can do papers only. Clear. Of course, once we start papers, you all will get homework papers to try it out on your own. You all will have exams with me where I will mark it and give it to you all to see how much marks you all get. Like, like it will be like your school semester exams here yeah? to see how well you all do it. Uh, so those things will be done. But I need to get through the syllabus first. And once the syllabus is over, I have already arranged the short notes. As soon as it's over, I can give you all the short notes for both A's, Unit 1 and Unit 2 as well. Clear. So all those things I'll do for you. You will get the tune. Just give me some moment. They, they will give it to you. For now, you can just look at this. Yeah. What's your name? Your first class. Uh, online also, you never came. Ah, you came online. All right. You're Manal's friend. Kazi. Okay, guys. So let's start off, guys. Let's start off all of you all. Yeah. So is this the first class for the month? Yeah. Yeah. Because Abdurrahman... Uh, the first Saturday was, I think, the 1st of Jan. Yeah. So, thing is, uh, some people had partied all night on 31st. So, can't have no. Yeah. On the 1st. So, yeah. So, this is the first class. Anyways, there we promised to do four classes per month. No. So, there are four Saturdays. 8, 15, 22nd and 29th. So, you will get four Saturdays. Not an issue. Clear. Guys, let's move on with methods of production. Guys. Let's look at job production, all of you all. Yeah. Now, guys, what is job production? You all have done for O levels as well, long, long time ago. Job production is where you concentrate on producing just one output at a time. Is that clear? You, your entire concentration, we didn't do all this, right? In, in AS, we did. Clear. Where you concentrate and produce just one output at a time. So take something like a Rolex car, a Rolls Royce car, guys. Yeah? Rolls Royce roughly takes six months to make a car. And many of its components are handmade, damn it. You understand? It's job production. The business focuses on just producing one output at a time. Clear. Uh, let's take something like your, you know, uh, you know, customized birthday cakes, wedding cakes. What do you think it comes under? Job batch of flow. Job production again. Only one cake like that will be made. With happy birthday effort and with uh, the theme that effort loves. What do you like? Frozen, is it? Does it have to be an Elsa cake? I hope you have grown over that, yeah? Come, come. Wow. Like a, you, you could be a perfect bouncer for those clubs, you know, yeah? Nobody will mess with you. Okay, guys. So, uh, so is it frozen? Then, then what? Are we looking at... Uh... <laughs> Guys, so whatever the theme is, whatever you like, yeah. So uh, they'll make the cake and it is just one particular customized cake like that. One of them. So uh, let's say, uh, Azad, no offense, huh? yeah. Uh, let's say Azad is getting married, guys, yeah. So the, he has to get a tailor-made suit that You all know, no tailor-made suit. You're not going to wear a ready-made suit for your wedding, no man. Because your size is also a bit weird, yeah. I don't think you can get a proper ready-made suit for your size. So then he'll go to the tailor. Tailor will keep him and be like, ah, make a digai. Ah, make a thondatama digai. Ah, po, make a nanghari kotai. Um, um, vechana dinatama dinayani. Yeah. No, no, the hand, hand. 
your hands are a bit thin, no. Nothing else. You understand? Nothing else, nothing else. Yeah, your hand. Okay, guys. Yeah. So, digai, digai, kotai, measurement is taken and made. That is job production for you. It will be perfect for Azad, yeah? Because only his one is so small, yeah? Thank you, thank you. Ka. Only his one is so small, guys. The hand, hand size, yeah? Uh, take a seat, madam. You can sit anywhere you like. Where would you like to sit? You can sit there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. Take this tooth. Ah. Uh, anyone else who doesn't have the tooth? I think I'm going to run short of it again. Pass it. Pass it. And pass it. Pass it right at the back. I'm, yeah, so it's perfect, clear. So guys, that is job production for you guys. I hope you understood. Just one output is made at a time, clear. Then what is batch production, guys? Batch production is where a business concentrates on producing few identical goods at a time. Once the production is over, the production is switched to producing another set of identical goods. So it's not one. It's not many. It's few identical goods at a time, clear. And batch production is most popularly used by clothing manufacturers. Clothing manufacturers, guys, produce few in different sizes, few in different colors. Why? Because people of different sizes. Simple as that. Let me just take the boys here. Yeah? So if I take Ayman, he looks like double XL to me. Are you double XL? Triple XL? XL? Are you sure? Certain shirts double XL? Depends, huh? Depends on the shirt. For me, you look like double XL to me. Yeah. Your XS, Azad? Medium. Okay. So he's medium, he's XL. I am medium, sometimes large. Say few. Medium or large. Really? Both are similar sizes. Yeah. New guy from Gateway, you? Are you also XL? Yeah. So XL. So you all can see, right? How can clothing manufacturers make the same size fits all? and produce millions in that. It doesn't work. People are on different sizes. Not only that, people like different colors as well. Some like black, some like white, some like blue, some like green, some like pink, some like whatever, yeah? Whatever the colors you like. So clothing manufacturers have to make in different sizes and different colors. That's why when you go to buy clothes in the section, you can see medium large like that. And you can also see, okay, all the blacks are together in different sizes. Then blues are there, like t-shirts. I'm talking about casual t-shirts case. Because people like different colors and they are of different sizes. Simple as that, yeah? You have to make it in batch production. Any other industry you can think of using batch production. Bakeries. Bakeries have to make a batch of patties in the morning, batch of patties in the afternoon, batch of patties in the evening. They can't make one shot patties for the entire month. Are they patties will you can't store for so long? Correct no, yeah. It will bloody get spoiled. Correct no. So they have to make it in batches. So food industry, clothing industry, and all they use batches. Yeah. So what's flow production guys? right. Flow production is where you produce large quantity of identical good. Yeah. Massive, mad amount of products are made of the same identical good. Coca-Cola, Cadbury chocolates, Maggi noodles, Prima Kutumi noodles, uh, uh, Candos chocolates, uh, Nestle, Milo, uh, these uh, soap brands like Detol, Lifeboy, uh, all that, all that are mass production. They make the same identical good in massive quantities, right? Even smartphones, yeah? even these are what? Uh, mass produced. Same identical phone is made in millions, no man. Then it is mass production only. AirPods are mass produced. All these are mass produced. You understood, guys? Yeah. Mask that you all are wearing, massive production. Correct? No. It's the standard size, right? Mask and all, you don't get different sizes. No. I mean, you do, but still, massive quantities are made. So you can consider it as, uh, you know, uh, mass, uh, what, flow production, guys. Clear. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah, all good, lovely games. So then uh, let's have a look at it, guys. Yeah. So you understood the three. There is something called cell production. I'll get to that in a while. That is the only hard one out of the lot, I guess. Yeah, the first three are pretty easy, guys. 
Uh, so guys, what are the advantages of job production gigs? Value added product tailor made for the customer. Like the satisfaction you will get from a tailor made suit, you can't get that from a ready made suit. Correct? No. Tailor made suit is made for you, bang. Yeah, it's perfect. Like you will, you will feel satisfied. Simple as that. Yeah? High level of customer satisfaction. So first and second point is connected. Ah, uh, yeah. You can charge a higher price. Why do you think Rolls Royce cars are so expensive, guys? Because it is customized. Simple as that. Yeah. Increased job satisfaction as each job is different. Workers are also more satisfied. You know why? Because, guys, uh, let's take a tailor. Tailor is not making the same suit. It is the suit, but different size. Yeah. Some buggers are massive. Like, let's say, Ayman goes, the bugger might need huge bloody tape. Ambo, make a nang. Just kidding, just kidding. Just the shoulder length. Yeah. The guy, the guy. So it's a different, this thing, different challenge all to him. Yeah. Azad goes, uh, it might be pretty easy for him because everything is small, small. No, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, the, 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 the shoulders, the, the, you know, the hip and all that. Yeah. So, guys, it's not the same thing. It is the suit, but it's not the same size. So there is some variety in work, makes the job more interesting. But flow production, guys, flow production, you specialize and do the same shit every day. Every day you do the same shit. Like let's say you're working for a card, uh, you know, this game card uh, company. So your job is to pack the cards. Like legit, every day you would just go and do the same thing here yeah? like this. Yeah? Guys, have you all seen this video? In the beginning, this bugger can't get the word beginning in his mouth. You all want to see? Okay. Give me a second. What just happened? Yeah, thank God. Yeah. Give me a second, guys. Yeah. In the Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning, in the, in the beginning, in the beginning, yeah. in the, in, in, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the beginning, yeah. In 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 the beginning, in the beginning, in, in, in the be in in the beginning, in the begin meaning. I don't know what he's telling you. Yeah. Oh no! Ah no! Are you mad? Look at how naturally. Then he should be in Hollywood. Then look at how natural that is. Yeah. Uh, me, but did I want to show you all okay? this? No. Card packing, yes. So, guys, if you take uh, the set of uh, fastest workers compilation, guys, yeah. Uh, in that they show you about the card packing, but uh, let's see if it is there, guys. Yeah. yeah. Let's say, guys, every freaking day you have to come and do the same shit. After a point, you would agree that it will become just boring. Yeah? There is no difference. Every day you have to come and do this stuff every day. For some reason, the net is a bit slow, guys. Yeah. Oh,这个速度太快了！这个速度太快了，天哪！这个速度太快了，天哪！我再巧没那么巧。So guys, you agree, right? Doing this every single day, would it make your job bo uh, boring? Again? But in job production, it's not like that. Each job is different. So it's more exciting for you. Clear. What are the disadvantages, guys? No economies of scale. Uh, you all have studied economies of scale, right? Yeah. Because you're producing only one at a time. To achieve economies of scale, guys, you have to produce large uh, quantities of identical goods. Then only you can achieve economies of scale. Clear. So here you can't get that, guys. Disadvantage, uh, second disadvantage, damn time consuming. Clear. I told you Rolls Royce takes six months to make a car. 
Can you guess how long Toyota takes to make a car? 18 hours. 18 hours to make a car. Where is 18 hours? 18 hours is less than one day. Rolls Royce takes six months to make a car. Why? Because that is all made by machines and whatnot. And uh, this is uh, mostly made by hand. So obviously this will take six months and that will take only 18 hours. Can you see the difference? Less than one day. That one, that is six months. Half a year to just make one car. Bugatti and all, certain models take two years to make. The La Vuitton oil, the most expensive car that was sold, guys, yeah? Took two years to make, just one car, guys. Why? Tailor-made, customized, blah, blah, blah. So you can't make that many units at once. Is that clear, guys, yeah? Third one, a lot of tools are needed. So it might be slightly expensive. Ah, highly skilled workers are needed. So if you take Toyota's labor and Rolls-Royce labor, Rolls-Royce labor will be smarter because they have to customize and all the you need smarter workers. Having skilled workers is good. But the problem is what? They demand for? They demand what? Higher salaries. So it will be more expensive for you. You understood? Higher pay. Anna, right? Yeah. So guys, I hope you all understood that. Guys. Yeah. Uh, then guys, batch production. What are the advantages? There is some economies of scale, so low average cost of production. There is a level of division of labor and specialization where workers will do the same thing again and again, uh, similar to that video that I showed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys. So, uh, uh, the other advantage is division of labor and specialization, guys. Yeah. So, that's, that's where you're producing the same thing over and over again. Like those workers that I showed you. Yeah. Uh, those workers were making the same product again and again. So, they specialize. They become very fast. Have you all seen that paratha guy, guys? Baga just throws the paratha just does like this. and Next level accuracy, guys. Have you all seen? No? That is specialization to another level, guys. Yeah. What do I type? Paratha throwing or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, catching paratha. Yeah. This is the word. Yeah. Not bad, though. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, look at this case. Can you see that? He's waiting to catch the you can see the whole video guys not even one misses bang yeah that is why whole day this is what he is doing the whole day, whole year, he's making parata, 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 guys. You will obviously specialize. You can do things faster. So that's another advantage, guys, which is not found in job production. Clear. Third advantage, uh, batches can be varied to meet customer needs. That means, like I told you, you can make it in different sizes, different colors. So, you know, more people will be satisfied. Clear. What are the disadvantages, though, guys? Yeah. Uh, work in progress and stock holding cost is very high. What do you mean by that? That means in batch production, guys, yeah, you produce more output. No. So you need a warehouse to stock all the goods and keep. You understood? So there will be like flow production. This, this uh, disadvantage is there in flow production as well, guys. Yeah? Where once the goods are made, guys, you will need like a big warehouse to stock everything and keep. But in job production, you don't have this warehouse problem. You make the product, you deliver it to the customer. That's it. But in flow and batch production, you have to make it in advance. No. So you have to stock it in these warehouses and all that. So you have to pay for the rent of the warehouse. You have to pay for maintenance, uh, electricity, uh, security, and then pest control because the damn rats might come and bite on the products and go. Big warehouse problem that is. is cockroaches and uh, rats. My cousin, he does supplements. So he has a supplement warehouse. Once he told that the rats had come and bitten the supplements and uh, taken some protein and gone. You understood? Now they must be doing push-ups and all that in their, in their hood, I guess. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> uh, he had to throw because once the rat bites, guys, you can't sell that no, because it's uh, harmful for the health also. 
he he said he threw so many chips after that he got uh, contact of a company called lankem uh, they come and do this pesticide control they put some medicine and all go from that day he has no problems with chips yeah i wonder why they want to those uh, you know whey protein and stuff like that i have no idea clear uh, disadvantage guys boring work doing the same thing again and again guys i'm sure he's throwing the paratha to make his work a bit more interesting but otherwise it's like damn boring no man now he's throwing paratha people are filming there is some kick otherwise every day making making and keeping then giving it to his hand my god so boring guys yeah i mean if you stand there it will knock on your face for your height and size it will knock on your face all those buggers are short no so shape thank you yeah guys uh, flow production what are the advantages guys there yeah? very large output no doubt about it guys coca cola produces 1200 bottles every minute from one factory you can't produce output like that if you are using batch and flow a uh, batch and uh, job production guys yeah very smooth continuous flow of products like products will keep coming smoothly 24/7 output will keep coming in a flow production by factory guys yeah very little work in progress that means uh, raw materials are converted to finished goods very fast high production efficiency like the 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 number of defects so production efficiency and defects are connected guys you would really have two defective coca colas think about it when was the last time you bought a coke and it tasted different to the other coca cola bottle that you bought azad has it happened to you no never that's never happened you drink quite a lot of coke is it exactly it can't happen because it's made by the same machinery guys it can't go wrong but guys if you take job production so restaurants do job production where after you order they'll make the food yeah how many times has this happened so you have ordered something from a particular restaurant it was damn tasty so you had the same expectation and ordered the next time but next time it's not as good as the first time you ordered has it happened quite a lot why made by humans no humans can make errors and mistakes and stuff like that machines can't you you machines actually can't make a difference because once you program it it is just supposed to do the same thing again and again simple as that it can't make an error do you understand that guys so less number of defects what are the disadvantages damn expensive to buy those machines and all ultra expensive you can't afford it simple as that yeah it's very expensive only the big companies can afford it guys yeah our uh, workers will be made redundant like uh, once amazon became flow yeah they started uh, using this uh, amazon kiva robots guys yeah to become more flow how many workers lost the their shelves. jobs guys it's been after these here robots it's the shelves which do the walking or the the entire factory had workers running around making goods then they bought this kiva robot or more precisely that was artificial the intelligence shelf unit it arrived on the orange robot wheeled units operating under remote control at the front here we've got cameras cameras sensors, in every angle they're looking for any obstructions that camera sensors very rarely crashes with each other highly reliable guys yeah so flow production if you use stuff like that amazon laid off 2000 workers in that warehouse 2000 workers were also leave right you don't need workers anymore machines will perfectly bring the product to your hand and give you just have to put it in the box and ship it you understand otherwise you had workers running around it was like a maluka day buggers are running around everywhere with a tabloid in their hand tabloid is showing the directions they have to go this is not like that you click on the screen wait for about 10 minutes somewhere the the, the damn robot will come and give you the goods and go and it will go exactly to where it was huh? <laughs> you know the size of amazon warehouse 27 football fields put together 26 wembley stadiums put together one article said uh, so the ones who watch football you all may know wembley stadium it's huge 27 of that it's a mad warehouse case huge huge yeah? so imagine uh, machinery is doing it it's more efficient it's more uh, stuff like that but the disadvantage is workers will be made redundant so you have to make redundancy payments i guess Uh, you may get a bad name for being so stingy laying off american workers blah 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 uh, disadvantage number 3 takes a long time to set up so after amazon bought those machines it took time to set it up where yeah? you can't just you know buy 
yesterday and running today it's not the remote control car in your house yeah where you can put battery and start playing this you have to train understand how it works there'll be hiccups initially you have to call that uh, team again fix it there'll be a lot of trial and error going on at least one one and a half years it will take clear so job batch and flow production any questions any questions with job batch and flow no lovely clear now let's move on to self production all of you all guys yeah self production guys i want you all to take this diagram first then i'll explain it to you all guys yeah take this chutti diagram down guys yeah not this no okay guys just take this diagram down guys yeah mm. let me try manually i guess okay and then you it's a very basic diagram guys there yeah? so maybe you can do it slightly neater i guess yeah and then you have workers around if you want to draw mona lisa type workers i don't mind but i want to save on time so i'm just drawing some stick workers yeah okay guys it's a u shaped production system that that kind of looks like this here yeah? okay that now guys listen to me all of you yeah now what the hell is this this case is basically uh something called cell production where i think i need to explain to you all traditional uh, production system so that you all understand cell better clear so let me just uh, add a page here yeah okay now listen to me carefully yeah traditional production system was like a straight line clear where you know workers would work in a straight line guys yeah and you would have one worker here he'll finish his work pass to the next worker he'll finish his work pass to the next worker yeah this was a tradi traditional production line guys yeah but this traditional production line is so flawed why because there is no accountability there is no responsibility quality issues can take place let me tell you yeah let's take something like an engine so let's take car manufacturing let's take engine guys okay now engine even though it's just one component of a car when you're going to if you're a car manufacturer you understand that in engine there'll be so many so much work like ordering the engine uh, getting it delivered to the warehouse then sending it to the production uh, fixing it with the right nuts and bolts the right engine to the right car because there might be certain engine for let's say uh toyota land cruiser v8 then there will be some engines for the uh, toyota prado tx tx will have a like a smaller engine compared to the v8 in land cruiser you get it so you can't put the tx engine in the v8 because then it doesn't serve the purpose you get it so there are specifications in engine blah 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 clear so let's say this guy is supposed to order this guy is supposed to send it to production send it to production yeah 
this guy is supposed to uh, fix it, I guess, yeah, stuff like that. Okay, guys. Now let's say something goes wrong with the engine. Okay, so you have the manager who will call the guy who fixed it, yeah, and tell Moda Musalaya, ah, ya Mule Liya da onag Mule na the bang Mona the bang karla thi ne. Ah, like that. So this bugger might be like, sir, why are you scolding me? I just fixed it. He's the one who sent it to me. Then manager is like, ah, yeah, no. Then calls this bugger and looks at him, ah, and goes like, then the worker, hey, hey, what happened? What, sir? Monada bang, yawala thi enne mode ya? Indi ne kattla thi enne customer complain karno. ंजीनियर What you all do at school? Miss, not me. Miss this bugger. Uh, um, uh, that bugger will tell someone else. You understood? You all are anyway pros at it from school level. Yeah, there is good training given to you. Then what happens is, guys, uh, issues are never sorted. It will keep continuing like in a loop. Yeah, it will just keep happening again and again. Yeah. Then comes introducing cell production, where each major component of a car. is put into a cell yeah so you would call this a uh, cell engine guess what yeah you would have a group of workers dedicated in this cell this group will have a team leader as well this group is responsible for the quality of the engine the fixing of the engine basically nothing could go wrong if it goes wrong that entire cell will be called and blasted now it's like this in school you would do something when you know you can get away with it but the moment you realize you will definitely get caught if you do this then you will be a bit scared to do something you will be more careful same mentality applies here as well you know now if something goes wrong you could get royally screwed you could even lose your job yeah you become more responsible you become more accountable quality of output improves because everyone works together everyone focuses on the engine make sure it's perfect do you all understand that that is cell production instead of getting division of labor and specialization where one worker does one thing here you divide it into cells and each cell has a team and each cell is responsible for one complete unit of work like engine so there will be another cell for gearbox they are responsible purely for gearbox then there will be another cell for steering wheel like this yeah another cell for painting another cell for tires another cell for body kit another cell for tail wheel you cars seats and another cell for seat belt seats and seat belts i think will be together ha huh? transmission okay transmission yeah transmission or whatever yeah so there you go and each cell is just responsible for their own complete unit of work they become more accountable guys uh, trust me the quality will improve because now they work in teams no it has to improve i all are okay with that lakshmita did you understand that yeah uh, i am okay good online students any questions you all have the 24 of you all who are online any of you all have any questions all good yeah so since you all are not replying i am assuming you all understood if you all didn't understand please ask me Okay, so uh, should be fine then. Okay, guys. Yeah. Now, guys, look at uh, uh, features of a cell production. Is just what I explained to you. Look at advantages of cell production. Yeah. First advantage you see is teamwork. I told you, no, all work together. So one advantage is you are more motivated as well, because some of you all may remember Maslow's hierarchy theory. He believed in something called social needs. and social needs were met when workers work together so that is also done here in cell production workers work in team no they they become more motivated because honestly guys it's more fun 
working in a team than alone take this example would you prefer going for an individual class or a group class individual class you can get more attention but still many of you all prefer group class because it's more fun otherwise in individual class you are looking at the teacher she is looking at you suddenly there is an awkward eye contact then you move your eyes then she is looking somewhere else then when she cracks a joke you have to laugh alone <laughs> <laughs> then you are looking there is nobody then you are laughing shit yeah stuff like that it's a bit and i i mean it's not that bad i'm just exaggerating but uh, you know group classes are slightly better i guess yeah i'm just saying isn't it guys isn't it yeah wouldn't you prefer if what do you were, do you like individual class you like group class is it yeah um, because of that these other what about you um ah suck individual classes suck ah i thought you were going to say individual classes yeah just to see what i tell ah, so you you prefer group class okay clear guys uh, but you all have been to individual classes right i have been i have been to group classes as well so i'm telling from my personal experience you understand yeah so yeah so uh, uh, sometimes after going for group classes also some students can't concentrate i can't tell you the teacher's name or whatever so she was an econ teacher i the student was coming for bs to me he was not going for servizim's class uh then <laughs> Uh, he stopped that econ teacher's class and came for servicing. I know that teacher. I was like, why? Uh, why did you stop that class? No, sir. She's mar a good, but can't concentrate. Why? She's damn good looking, no, guys, sir. Uh, but I'm getting distracted. So but her, but, but her looks are distracting. So yeah. Okay, guys. Problems of looking too good also sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I started laughing. He was like, "Sir, sir, don't tell anyone." Me, <laughs> Charles said, "You don't." I tell you everything. I'm like, "Ah, okay, 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 guys." So, uh, second one, guys, increase productivity because uh, you know everybody is committed and all that. So there can be great output, guys. A uh, better accountability. This is one of the main points, guys. Yeah, because they will take full responsibility of their work because they know now they have to. Uh, unnecessary movement is avoided. Now, guys, what do you mean by unnecessary movement? Okay. now listen to this now in traditional uh, line like this yeah let's say this guy let's name him john here yeah? he wants to meet this guy at the end of the production line let's name him sam yeah guys look at the distance he has to cover there is a massive distance to be covered there is a lot of movement a lot of time may be wasted you might be like sir they can just call and check up uh factory workers cannot use their phones while working and factory workers can't have laptops and stuff like that they generally work on a you know manual basis so land lines also factory workers won't have managers might have executives might have the worker working in the production line he or she may not have clear look at cell production gates he is technically the first worker no yeah so let me just take him a little bit up he is technically the first worker and he is the last worker <laughs> look at the distance gate because it's a u shape right it's a u shape no now the distance is very less if you even if you want to meet the last guy in the last cell the distance is so low but in a straight line production method gaze the distance is so high because it's a straight line you have to walk 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 and go you understand this is not like that it's a u shape here you can see you no know, it's a u shape so unnecessary movement is also avoided they can easily talk to each other did you all understand that guys yeah it's pretty easy point then uh, uh flow space is released you don't need a big space in u shape guys you're squeezing in more with available space now when you're doing in a straight line like that guys the problem is there might be a lot of unused space on either side u shape ek aim and any you are trying to squeeze in more so there is more flow space being used and there will be more flow space being released your rent also might be less compared to doing production in a straight line compared to doing in u shape you can take a smaller place and do so you can reduce on rental cost and stuff like that guys clear what are the disadvantages you have to train workers uh in working in a self production guys how to take responsibility how to you know look into things 
is not easy. So you have to give them some sort of training which is expensive, and some workers cannot fit into a team. You, you want to say? If you personally ask me, sir, do you prefer working alone or in a team? I definitely prefer working alone because I was put in teams when I was working in a company. Yeah, just like my school days. What happens when you put into a team? You know, you 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 been through this. Only one or two buggers will do all the work, and none of the other fellows will do anything. Isn't it true? I I don't know. You all might have been in a special team. I don't know. But the teams that I have been, yeah, one or two buggers will only get together and do. Sometimes that one or two bugger is not me. Also, there'll be someone else who has got together and done it. Yeah. Now in school, at least you can tell the teacher, she pay ye, yeah. Uh, because your ass kisser like that, yeah. Be like, miss, they didn't do anything. Miss, I only did everything. Yeah, miss will scold and uh, stuff like that. In office, you can't do that. It's like Mara Charter, yeah. Trust me, I was once put into a group with five different ladies. I was the only guy in that group. None of them did anything. Not because they are ladies. It's just that they were bloody lazy ladies. Yeah, didn't do anything. Two days before submission, it was a huge project. Yeah. All are coming in. I know, sir. Yeah, <laughs> have I told you? All? I have told you all. No, yeah. All are coming in, bloody hugging me, and you know, making it difficult for me to tell no or shout and stuff like that. And I ended up doing all the work. I swear, I remember the manager telling, "Well done, team." I can't remember the team name also. Well done, team. It was burning inside. <laughs> I only did everything, no man. Yeah, but bled the team and those shameless girls. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Wah pila marano, yeah. Bloody, I don't know how how they can <laughs> thank you for that. Okay, guys. Next one, guys. Theory X type of workers are not suitable. So there is something called theory X and theory Y type of workers. Theory X workers are lazy. They dislike work. They'll avoid responsibility. They only work for money. Such workers will not fit into a self-production gate. Yeah, so that's also done, guys. This is also done. Yeah, let's move on to productivity now. Clear, yeah. guys. There is a small difference now. Generally, we assume that okay, productivity and efficiency is the same thing, but actually, productivity and efficiency is not the same thing. There is a slight difference between the two. Does anyone know what is productivity? Does anyone know what is efficiency, guys? Let's see. Until you all do that, let me order something. Hungry. What is the difference between productivity and efficiency gains? Safe, tell me some nice place to order, will you? Huh? I ordered. You were not there. I ordered pizza that day. Ask and see. Yeah, you were not there. Tell you you said, "Damn hungry." Anything is fine. <laughs> donor and yeah, donor and donor. What do you want me to try there? Full beef. Full beef donor. Guys, can you did you all figure it out? Until I figure out my lunch. Ah, classic, no? Good, no? That okay, guys. Uh, productivity is the number of output per worker. Efficiency. Wow, wow, lovely, Abdul Rahman. That is exactly the difference between the two. Clear, guys. Productivity is based on like productivity. What it means is how fast you can produce, how far, how quickly. Efficiency is nothing to do with how quickly. Efficiency is to do with how can you produce cheaply. You understand? If you can produce it very cheap, then you are very efficient. You understand? If you can produce something quick and cheap, then you are both productive and efficient. Then why do we normally tell 
okay productivity and efficiency are the same thing that is because both are connected i'll tell you yeah this is simple economic if you're productive that means you're producing a lot right if you're producing a lot you already have studied in economics when you produce more what happens to your long run average cost it decreases so you become more efficient correct no that's why both are connected you understand but if you want to know the difference productivity is to do with the speed the ratio of output per a given ratio of input whereas efficiency refers to how you can uh, produce it at the lowest possible unit cost you understand trying to produce it at the lowest cost possible is known as efficiency so as a business guys you need to try to anna right lovely humera that is also correct clear so a business needs to be both productive where they can produce very fast and they have to be efficient as well where they can produce it at the lowest cost clear so let's take these iphones they yeah? them these are made in china and the theory is it is more efficient to produce in china compared to america why what's the problem of producing in america labor is expensive so in other words if you can produce it in china you can be more efficient because labor is damn cheap you understand yeah and productivity wise both workers are similar even chinese buggers can produce fast americans also can produce fast for argument sake let's say that american workers are slightly faster doesn't matter the cost saving is huge you understand yeah and that is efficiency for you this is the that is the reason this american product is made in china not only this man everything is made in china because it's more efficient to make in china yeah so if you take this uh, these are bloody bmw bottle yeah when i look down made in china this bloody dialog router so called sri lankan company made in china can you see can you see if it's made in china in that white color here here somewhere here yeah dialog router so called sri lankan router guys yeah everything is bloody made in china you know so your coronavirus is also made in china so your most probably your death is also from china guys but india is more efficient i don't think so uh, as in uh, unit cost wise it may be low produced in india is cheaper that is for india drama yeah iphones produced in india are cheaper for indian because there is no duty but uh, if uh, otherwise we will also get indian smartphones no if it was cheaper then uh, apple will produce all the iphones in india no the unit cost is cheaper in china trust me otherwise they'll do everything in india they are not stupid like that yeah guys so i hope you all understood the uh, productivity guys any questions with productivity all good yeah then let's move on to ways in which you can improve productivity or should i say the factors that affect your speed so these are the factors that affect your speed guys yeah one is technology if you use the latest machineries and stuff like that then pata 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 you can produce correct no here yeah? i mean take this mnm factory guys yeah take this mnm factory in uh, i think it's in uk itself uh, the mnm factory guys they produce 2 billion mnms uh, every 8 hours 2 billion mnms huh? that's That's a lot of M and M's, guys. Yeah. We've been making M and M's in New Jersey since 1941. New Jersey, America. Guys. My yeah. name's Leanne Ada. I'm the plant director. Mm -hmm. I'll take you through a little inside look into how we make M and M's. Anyone like Smarties more than M and M's? Because I'm one of them. Into a paste. Prefer Smarties more the than M and M's. Next step is no? we send the chocolate to tempering. One that... The chocolate goes through several heating and cooling Depends steps on your mood, to create it? just the right crystalline structure to make a perfect M and M center. They are then put into a sifter that sifts out part of the webbing from the sheets. Me. Huh? Our final step is coating, where we put the colorful shell on no, our hands. No, yeah, people. We spray yeah. multiple layers of I'm color on our hands, where it forms that hard candy shell so that it doesn't melt in your hand. Our standard color mix is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and brown. We bag the candy. Robots actually pick up the bags and put it into cases. We then send the cases through an elevator, and the elevator this then takes the cases to a palletizer. Where we palletize it, we put Everything it on trucks. Everything is done by machines. And, and immediately whatnot. that day, within eight hours, it goes to customers. We make millions of M and M's daily. We are a 24/7 operation. Pakistan is the standard for what all M and
millions. I was wrong. Not two billion. They make millions of M and M's daily. Clear. Still quite a lot. Yeah. Trust me. If workers were working, workers can't produce millions of M and M's every day. Correct? No. Because workers can't work so fast. Still. That is called technical productivity. You have the latest state of the art machineries that can produce goods really fast. You saw the the whole thing is done by machinery guys. Yeah. The chocolate to this thing. Haven't I shown you all Kit Kat factory guys? Have I shown you all the Kit Kat factory? No. The whole thing is technical uh, productivity guys. Very fast done by machineries and whatnot guys. Yeah. Check this out guys. Kit Kat factory. So this is technical productivity for you. We are you're totally dependent on uh, machinery guys. Yeah. Hmm. about this weaker substance ah uh, to base can you see the whole thing is done by machinery i can't hear you because of this green tea version no no this is the original milk chocolate Understood the drill. So that is technical productivity for you, guys. Yeah. So what's the next one, guys? After technical productivity, production factors. That means, guys, yeah, all departments should be properly planned, co coordinated, and controlled. That means production factors is where raw materials are there. You're not waiting for raw materials. Workers are ready. There is no power cut. There is no water cut. Yeah. Everything is smooth. Everything is there. You understood? Yeah. the petrol for the machinery is also available like those are production factors like all the input is ready so that you can produce the output quickly imagine input finishing like raw materials over then you have to wait till the supplier delivers imagine current goes and you don't have a generator then you have to wait till the current comes yeah those are production factors everything is properly planned everything is streamlined everything goes according to plan then production can be quite fast output can be high understood no you all understood that right lovely clear third one organizational factors what do you mean by that guys that means authority and responsibility of every uh, individuals is properly understood like workers know what they are supposed to do he knows okay this is what he is supposed to do in the line the other worker knows okay this is his responsibility so both won't interfere in each other's work yeah like everyone knows their role and responsibility then productivity can be quite smooth you understood yeah Otherwise, guys, okay. Now let's say we don't streamline things. Uh, I tell to print the tube, then uh, Abdul Rahman might tell frame, frame you print the tube. Frame will be like, no, I can't print. Uh, Ajit, you print. Ajit will be like, because I just went to the back office and said, ah, uh, uh, guys, uh, print the tubes and keep. You know how it works. Different days we dedicate a different person who is responsible for printing. Okay. So if I go and tell get this tube done, that person has to get the tube done. that is called organizational factors otherwise what will happen is he'll be like you print he'll be like no you print he'll be like he told you but he'll uh, then that bug will be like no he was looking at you uh, like that like that like that they'll keep exchanging words nothing will happen streamline things tell each worker exactly what he or she is supposed to do then things will happen normally guys yeah 
labor factors. What do you mean by that case? That means when you're recruiting itself, select smart, talented workers, output will anyway be fast. Clear? Because if you get unskilled buggers, they'll make more mistakes, uh, output will not be right, there'll be a lot of issues, etc. So you get the right labor, get the right talented buggers, output will anyway be high gain. Clear? Finance factors, you need to ensure that your business has enough money at any given time. Yeah, Because if you run out of time, uh, money gain, then you can't buy the raw materials, you can't pay your staff. Uh, if you can't buy the raw materials, supply will stop giving. You can't produce. If you don't pay your staff, they might show the two giant middle fingers to you and go on strike. Then also you can't produce. You don't pay the current bill, they'll cut the uh, electricity and go. Then how to do? They cut the water bill and go. Then how uh, water and go, how to do? You can't. You understand? Finance is needed to keep the output running. You understand? To keep it flowing. Again. You run out of money, the business will close. The output will stop. Simple as that. Next one is management factors. This is the guys who are running the business. They are the owners. They need to be uh, professional, future-oriented, sincere, competent. Not just the owners, the managers as well. Yeah? You need bloody good managers, guys, who are like really smart and whatnot. They'll do the work for you. You understand? They'll ensure that everything runs smoothly. That's why you know, managers are paid high salaries. Managers and directors... That is what you mean by management factors, Gay. You get the right managers and directors, pay them high salaries also, it's okay. Less headache for the owner. They'll ensure everything is done smoothly. You understood, Gay? Yeah? So that is management factors for you. Government factors. One of the reasons Sri Lanka's output could be low is because of government factors as well. You understood, yeah? Our government is not supportive, Gay. So, yeah? Our government... Uh, you know, doesn't provide subsidies and all to uh, factories, then also output can get affected. Our government, uh, you know, uh, uh, doesn't control inflation, then workers keep demanding high salaries. If you don't pay that, workers may go on strikes. So, uh, a lot of government, government can pass laws banning your product because let's say you're producing something to do with plastic, plastic gets banned. Then you can't produce. Simple as that. Yeah? Location factors. Like you need to locate your factory in a place guys, where infrastructure is very good. There are enough and uh, more facilities around. Uh, you're closer to the market. You're closer to the raw materials. There are skilled workers around the factory. And those things are also important. Yeah? If you locate your factory in some, uh, you know, uh, L, then you can expect elephants to come and work. Correct? No, yeah? They are all animals. No, uh, not L. Sorry. Yal, yal. Yeah. So you can't get it done. So you need to locate in a place where uh, it's an ideal location for a factory. You understand? Infrastructure is not so bad. Signal is good. Uh, transportation roads are good. Yeah. Uh, workers, there are smart workers around. Those things matter. So that is location factors. All this contributes to your output. Now we agree that KitKat has very high productivity, right? KitKat has very high productivity. Clear. Let's see if they meet all these factors. Yeah. Technology. Do they use the latest technology to produce their pool? Yes. Uh, do you think KitKat has like everything sorted out? Like the, the cocoa, sugar, uh, milk, wafers, and that, uh, you know, shitty looking green color substance. I don't know what that is. Apparently that is used to paste the uh, wafers together. Do you agree that they have enough raw materials of everything? Yeah, stuff like that. So that is production factors. Yeah. Uh, organizational factors means what? I'm pretty sure KitKat has clearly told the few workers that are working there on what their responsibilities are. Everything will be done by the machine. They just do a little bit here and there. And those uh, little bit that workers do, those workers are pretty smart. And KitKat has enough money <laughs> because it's part of Nestle. Nestle is one of the biggest Fast mover, fast moving uh, FMCG, fast moving consumer good uh, company in the world. Guys, yeah, they have some of the smartest people working for them, managers, and uh, government of this factory is in Japan. Yeah, so governmental factors are also pretty favorable because Japanese government is not like shitty Sri Lankan government who will do shitty things and be like apitame hondata makare. Yeah, Japanese government does not tell stuff like that, guys. Yeah. Uh, and uh, location factors. Japan infrastructure is very good. Signals are very like communication signals are good. 
um, skilled workforce is there, all that case. Clear. So that is done. Then, guys, comes process innovation. Now, process innovation, guys, is kind of connected to technical factors, technological factors or whatever you wrote it here. Yeah? So can you all write that there? Can you all write under process innovation, guys? Yeah? So put an arrow or something like that and write similar to technical factor. Similar to technical factor. Guys, now listen to me carefully. Yeah? Process innovation, how it works is guys. Now, technological factor is bringing the latest machinery. You know, process innovation is where you just you just make a massive change. Understood? You are just going to the next step. Like that's the next big change, something like that. It's way more than just implementing the latest technology. It's like changing the way things are done. Example, uh, Amazon usually delivers goods through courier service. The courier bugger will come and ting tong, uh, ring the bell and be like a package has come for you and you have to sign it and take the package. Haven't you all got courier goods there? Yeah? But I think I have shown you all where Amazon is trying what? Drone deliveries. Where you order packages, packages will fly to your house and come. Now that is process innovation where you're just changing the dynamics of the business. Yeah, like unheard of. Domino's delivered their first pizza through drone. Did I show you all that? No? Yeah. Monica, I just sent you the email with the client I'm looking at the doc now, but I think it's an older version. Can you send an update? In? So you get it, right? This is process innovation, guys, where you make like crazy change. Have I shown you all Amazon, Amazon Go? It's one of the world's first supermarket where there is no cashier. You just go in, take whatever the hell you want and just walk out. Have I shown you all that? Yes, I have referred there yeah, a long time ago. It's called just walk out technology. Take whatever the hell you want, just leave. You understood, yeah? So some remember, some don't. So I don't mind showing it again, guys. Yeah. This is also process innovation where you make drastic changes, guys. And this will increase productivity, right? Imagine delivering through drones. You can deliver output so fast because when you're delivering through people, buggers will get caught to traffic. Buggers can get caught to rain. Buggers can get caught to some strike on the road. Buggers can go get caught to some accident. Drones. But car car accident only. Some bird might go and crash on it. Possibilities are there in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, other than that, case, it will drastically improve productivity. Yeah. Check this Amazon Go game. Yeah, it's coming to Sri Lanka in another 150 years. Game, yeah? So let's have a look at it. Four years ago, we started to wonder what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store? grab what you want, and just go. What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? 
No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So, how does it work? How does it work is not important for you. So, yeah, clear. That is process innovation for you. Did you all understand that? Yeah, lovely game. So, those are all how you can improve productivity gains. We will have a look at efficiency after a break. Take a 15 minute break and come back, guys. Yeah? Take a break and come back. Uh, <clears throat> let's look at efficiency now, guys. So, you understood productivity was to do with what? how fast you can produce. So efficiency is about making the best possible use of all resources. In other words, trying to produce as cheaply as possible. Yeah. Now, so it's based on economies of scale. So how can you do something as cheaply as possible? Guys? When you use division of labor and specialization, uh, it will result in standardization. When you introduce standardization means what? Standardization is where? You tell the customer, look, I can't give you the way you want. I can have only one standard product. If you like it, you can buy it. Otherwise, don't buy. Like Coca-Cola. Can you tell Coca-Cola to, uh, you know, reduce the sugar a little bit or increase it a little bit further? You can't. You either have Diet Coke option or Coke Zero option or the normal Coca-Cola option. You can either have it or don't have it. Standardization. That's what you mean by standardization. It's the same thing. Clear. So let's take something like Maggie noodles. Maggie noodles has about five, six different flavors. And that is standardized. Yeah? Let's say you want a particular masala flavor. Can't get it. I'm sorry. Because that is the only flavor they'll give. If you want, you can make the masala flavor separately and cook it in McDonald's and eat it. That you can do separately. But Maggie will not give you. But you're asking why? Because it's standardized. They have factories that produce this product 24-7. You can't change it. Five, six different flavors is what you will get. Prima Kottumi, about three, four different flavors are there. And that's all you get. The hot and spicy flavor. Then there is this cheese, onion cheese flavor, which I don't like much. The blue color packard. And there is one more, I think. Only three flavors. Huh? You like the blue color? I don't. I like the hot and spicy. The purple one more. Yeah? Purple one for the win. Yeah? So, uh, guys. Uh, they have more now. Uh, the chicken one was also quite old. So those three only I know. There are more. Seafood is also. How is seafood? Uh, obviously. For 60 rupees you will get prawns inside. <laughs> yeah. So guys. Uh, may, uh, when you standardize products. Guys, you can produce the same uniform product in large quantities. No. Efficiency resulting in economies of scale. So that standardization is easy, guys. Yeah. Outsourcing. What's outsourcing, guys? Outsourcing is where you feel like if you do it, it's going to cost you more. So the best thing to do it is outsource it to another company. Give me a second. Uh, guys, uh, so outsourcing is where when you realize that another company can do it cheaper than you, you'd rather give it to them and get it done, guys. Yeah. Now, for example, guys, uh, let's take Apple. Yeah. So they realize that if they manufacture in America, it's going to cost them more. So the ideal option is to outsource to a Taiwanese company called Foxconn. Yeah. There's a Taiwanese company called Foxconn, guys. And this Foxconn only makes all the iPhones and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's actually made by Foxconn. So Foxconn is this Taiwanese company where Apple has given the contract for them to assemble all iPhones, iPads, uh, AirPods, etc. For which, for every iPhone they assemble, they get a commission base. Clear. Uh, why did they outsource? Honestly, it's cheaper for them compared to doing it in America. Again. Simple as that. I all are okay with that. That is outsourcing. You can reduce cost. Third one, guys. Third one is on uh, relocating. This is where you don't outsource you itself go to China and put a factory gates. Yeah? 
best example is uh, Mattel. Yeah. So uh, I think you all know Mattel guys. Mattel is the world's largest toy manufacturer guys. Yeah. And their most popular toy, I think you guessed it, is the Barbies. Barbies are the best selling toy ever in the history. Yeah. No other toy has sold more than Barbies. Because, you know, even some boys have played with Barbies. Uh, you know, there is nothing gay about it. Maybe slightly, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. You have played with that. You still... You're joking, right? I think you're joking. Ah. Okay, guys. So, uh, guys, uh, Barbie, Mattel, what they did was, instead of outsourcing, they went to Gangzhou. Gangzhou is a place in China, guys. They put up the factory and they, so that is called relocating. Outsourcing is you give it to another company to do it for you. Like what Apple did with Foxconn. Relocating is you don't trust anybody. Yeah? You itself go to China and put a factory and do it. Honestly, it's more headache. But you have more control, I guess. Yeah? So, yeah. I, I mean, I have played with Barbie, I'll be honest with you, when I was small. Yeah? Because I, had, I have an elder sister. No? So, her Barbie toys were there, I guess. So, I played a little bit. I'm just saying. Yeah? Just the combing of the hair part, I guess. It's fine. Yeah? Uh, guys, so, relocating. Downsizing can also improve your productivity gains. Yeah? Uh, what do you mean by downsizing? Downsizing is where, guys, yeah, you basically make your business smaller, more leaner, more efficient. In other words, you have thousands of workers and you realize the pandemic, pandemic has hit you hard. The demand is no longer what it used to be. You downsize. What do you mean by downsize? Close some factories, lay off workers, sell the machineries, make your business smaller. See, see a theory is simple. If you make the business smaller, uh, cost will reduce. If cost reduces, you will become more efficient. Yeah? Uh, that's exactly what HP did. HP guys is seeing a fall in demand uh, for many reasons. Can you guess why demand for laptops and personal computers are falling? Guys, yeah? huh? Very good. Yeah, Because more people are getting uh, used to uh, the iPads and the smartphones and stuff like that. So they have laptops. It's just that people don't upgrade laptops as often. So the demand for laptops and PCs have. Here guys, many, many employees are 30,000, up to 30,000 jobs in the coming months, guys. HP is going to lay off. That's a lot of workers. We call this downsizing, where when the going gets a bit tough, you downsize and be more efficient, reduce the cost, will help you survive during tough times. Simple as that. Did you all understand that, guys? Did all of you all understand that? Lovely. Clear. What's de-layering, guys? Yeah? De-layering, I think I have taught you all. Where you remove certain managerial levels. Yeah? Uh, guys, de-layering is there in another chapter. Yeah? iPad steps on the right. Yeah? Uh, give me a second, guys. Let me show you in one of the other tutes that I have taught you all de-layering. I remember doing de-layering. I'm pretty sure I did. Ah, yeah. In this particular tube gaze, yeah. Here you go. Clear. Delayering is where gaze, yeah. Before you were having, sorry, let me screen share gaze, yeah. Yeah, we did exactly. Clear. Before you were having regional manager, area manager, shop manager, supervisor, shop staff, all that you have. Clear. After you have regional manager, shop manager, shop staff, can you see? The area manager is missing now. After. You understand? Can you see that the supervisor is missing? This is called delayering. Delayering is where you remove certain layers from the organizational structure to save on cost. You feel like area manager is no longer needed. You feel like the regional manager can do the area manager's work as well. Clear. You feel like the supervisor is no longer needed. Why supervisor's work who can do? Shop manager can do. You understand? That is called delayering, where you reduce the layers in organizational chart gains, and that can save you on cost as well. Is that clear, guys? Yeah. Uh, another way to increase efficiency is gains, new technology. 
new technology guys you might be like sir technology is fast but how can it help you reduce cost dude when you bring in technology you don't need workers you will save on their uh, salaries over a period of time so you become more efficient no no sir yeah? lean production guys did we do lean production just in time kaizen huh? can you all remember tqm and all that yeah so those can make make you more efficient as well here yeah? kaizen just in time and all that can make you more efficient guys so those are the ways in which you can become more efficient so efficiency and this both was given i all all okay with that is everyone okay with that lovely guys clear now guys let's move on to uh, labor and capital intensive production guys here yeah? labor intensive and capital intensive guys let's have a look at it here yeah? something you all have done for o levels what's labor intensive azad do you remember what is it invest more in labor okay labor intensive is where you have more workers than machineries in your production process so i mean what is capital intensive lovely where you have more machineries than workers in your production process clear so guys if you take something like uh, schools schools are labor intensive or capital intensive labor labor all teachers running around yeah restaurants labor again banks to an extent labor uh so those are labor uh, salons you have a robot cutting your hair no no yeah so there those are all labor intensive capital intensive coca cola yeah this mnm factory that i showed you the kit kat factory all i showed you those are capital intensive guys yeah uh, let's have a look at them guys yeah let's have a look at uh examples of labor intensive food processing easy hotels and restaurants are labor intensive where there are more workers than machineries uh farming hair dressing and coal mining all pretty labor intensive guys capital intensive oil extraction these oil plants and all car manufacturing web hosting all these uh, you know the car, the there's artificial intelligence behind web hosting and all that intensive arable farming what is arable farming guys it is farming but it uses technology here like this guys yeah Yeah, this is uh, arable farming for you guys. Yeah. So you use machineries to get the uh, to cultivate and all that. So you get the idea. Right? all of this used to be highly labor intensive but now you can see that these uh, you know sophisticated tractors can do it very fast yeah this is arable farming for you so i hope you all understood that yeah uh ayman hifni is messaging so is it possible for me to get today's class recording i couldn't join because i was sick is it true is sick uh then transport guys uh, airports used to be highly labor intensive guys but now airports are becoming very sophisticated especially the hamas airport in qatar guys the whole thing is next level tech uh, like the checking into like there there are no workers guys yeah here let me just show you guys i think it's called the hamas international airport or something like that there yeah? why is it hamad international airport i don't know there yeah? anyways it should show similar results no Maybe I can put technology in airport. I guess there. Yeah. Ah, yeah, Hamad International Airport. My bad. But our Katuna Airport is better than this. Yeah. Manal Juventus is pretty really good too.
whole screening is also done there is no guy running around some you know machine around your body uh, getting awkwardly close to you nothing like that you stand here and just stand like this it'll do the entire screen so you get it right so airports also becoming increasingly capital intensive so uh, guys key differences between the two labor intensive the, the labor cost is higher than machinery is obviously uh, labor cost is generally variable in nature that's also easy and uh, if you locate in low cost labor you can benefit from low labor cost yeah uh, in a low cost area if you locate in cheap labor area like china you can benefit from low cost labor gain yeah? capital intensive obviously your machine cost is greater than uh, labor uh, maintenance cost is generally fixed case and uh, if you can get a, a long term cheap loan to buy the machinery then it should be fine clear uh, we are done with this particular tube as well guys yeah? uh please i think we we have a little bit of time no guys we can just have a look at capacity utilization i guess yeah so take out capacity utilization all of your guys that's the ninth tube let me see how many tubes we have in total guys yeah in total guys you have uh 11 tubes so uh, this and another two more yeah definitely hopefully 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 we should be able to start papers from february first week guys yeah should be able to start so don't worry about it too much okay guys let's have a look at capacity utilization ladies and gentlemen yeah uh, guys capacity utilization just write the formula and all down then i'll explain it to you all guys yeah write down the formula as capacity utilization equals capacity utilization equals current output divided by divided by total productive capacity into 100 okay okay now what the hell does this mean guys yeah it's very easy very easy yeah? capacity utilization simply refers to how much you can totally produce versus how much you are currently producing now for example guys this class can let's say accommodate 50 students okay uh, we can't take that example because we do online as well no so we have to take a manufacturing business clear uh, let's say a particular company guys can produce uh, uh, 1 million units that is their maximum capacity yeah huh? yeah they can produce maximum if they want they can produce 1 million but the demand is currently for 650000 units per month that means they can produce a million but the demand is only for 650000 then no point producing 1 million what are you going to do with the extra units you will have to throw it away demand is only for 650000 means your current output will be 650000 multiplied by 100 clear you will get an answer of 65% what does that mean from the total capacity you have you are using only 65% so you should try to increase it further and bring it closer to 100% why in vain no just idle capacity you have you should always try to produce it at the maximum capacity possible why if you can produce it at maximum capacity more sally for you simple as that but for that you have to increase demand understood if you want to increase your current output you better increase demand otherwise you will just have to throw all of that away clear that is capacity utilization how much you are currently producing versus how much you can totally produce multiplied by 100 gigs clear take down a small example there guys are uh, there you go ashika so they has given the formula yeah take down uh, an example guys yeah write down example write down elephant house elephant house
can produce can produce a total of a total of 1 million bottles per month however due to competition from pepsi and coca cola demand is low hence the factory's current output is 700000 is 700000 Calculate capacity utilization. What's the answer? 70% gays, yeah? That means they can produce a million, but they produce only 700,000 gays, yeah? So their capacity utilization is how much gays? 70%. Is that clear, gays, yeah? Uh, gays, do you think 100% is ideal? No, gays, yeah? Ideal is, if I'm not mistaken, between 85 to 90% you generally need to leave a little bit of room because if you're running at 100% gaze, the stress and pressure is just too high. That means you have to keep running the machine 24-7 without a break. The pressure is just too much. Yeah? 85 to 95 would be an ideal amount of ratio. Yeah, But then again, there are companies that run 100%. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, guys, uh, So that is the point there, guys. Yeah? Uh, so what's the problem of running at full capacity gaze, 100%? No time to do routine maintenance. Like the machine is running 24-7, man. If you are producing at 1 million, let's say Elephant House produces at 1 million, that means machine is running 24-7, no time to do maintenance. If you don't do maintenance, what will happen? Machine will break. You all know that. Yeah. Uh, new orders come. Let's say Elephant House gets a new order uh, for their cream sodas or EGB. You all know EGB. Anyone loves ginger beer? I hate ginger beer. Guys. You like ginger beer? Yeah. A new thing called apple soda, elephant house apple soda. I should try EGB. I can't drink man. Yeah. My father loves EGB, but I can't. I don't know. I, too strong for me. Yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. Percent, uh, be constant always. No, 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 no. Every month, I can change. Good question. Clear. So, guys, new orders come for EGB and stuff like that. You can't take it because you're already running at full capacity. You can produce a million and you're producing a million. You can't produce more than that. Uh, staff may feel under excessive pressure. Can't take break. Because you have to keep producing at that speed. So you have to wear pampers and only go to work. Simple as that. Factory space may be overcrowded. Like when you're running at 100%, it's, a, it's very messy. Like no time to clean. There is no free time, right? When you're free only, you will feel like cleaning your room and all that. When you're like full on busy, your room will look messy. You know, like that only. Factory will also look very messy and overcrowded and all. Because no time to do routine maintenance, uh, cleaning, uh, keeping it tidy. All those uh, things, no time to do. You understood, guys? Yeah? So I hope you all understood that, guys. In general, uh, 80 to 90% capacity is generally ideal, guys. Yeah? Guys, we will start with causes of undercapacity utilization next week, guys. So remind me to start from causes of undercapacity utilization next week. So we are getting very close to finishing the syllabus and starting papers case. Good. So until we meet again next Saturday, on that note, on that note, on that note, that's concluded for the day, guys. I shall see you all again next Saturday. 
Take care. God bless you all. Stay safe. Bye-bye. God bless you all.